They announce Jay Cutler's name and I go, why did I exhale, guys? Because I was happy that I got second place. Because you know what they do with second place? You should have won, Phil. I had you winning. Everybody loves the underdog now. Everybody roots for the underdog. The underdog is safe. Very interesting. He's safe. Becoming the champion would be a different level, and if Phil really wanted to be the next Mr. Olympia, he would have to accept the responsibility that really comes with the title and truly own it. And that mindset and goal is what he carried with him into the 2011 season. What was Phil Heath thinking since the day he left Las Vegas last year to get ready for this show here this year, 2011 Mr. Olympia? What went through Phil Heath's mind? Um that I'm going to be the 13th Mr. Olympia. Phil set his sights solely on the 2011 Mr. Olympia. This year would be big for him. Having been a pro for six years and improved year over year, Phil was too big and accomplished to fly under the radar like he used to and the anticipation would slowly start to mount. Early predictions had Phil and Jay battling in a rematch once again. Phil, however, would not feel the hype like he used to. There was no need to convince anyone of how impressive he was or how good he could be it was very clear that Phil was astounding. So he chose to conduct himself like a champion and work in silence that offseason. No more promises, no more trash talk, all action. The fans and the judges were going to see a different Phil Heath in 2011, a Phil Heath who was ready to own it. So when the 2011 Mr. Olympia rolled around, Phil Heath would be ready to truly embody his nickname, The Gift. I definitely wasn't satisfied with second. And knowing that I was that close at the 2010 Mr. Olympia next to Jay, hearing my name being chanted just as loud, if not louder, than his crowd, his his crowd was, and uh, you know, just knowing that I belonged, I have a whole lot more years ahead of me in this sport that are going to be better. And here's going to be this is right here. This is going to either win it or lose it for him right here. With the prejudging underway, everyone couldn't wait for Phil Heath to come out, and when he did, he showed out. I'm going to use the words. And my good friend and colleague Larry Pepe used to describe Phil Heath, and I, and I think it's a great description. His physique is very much three-dimensional in a way that no other bodybuilder can claim. And uh, he said he was adding on some thickness. He said he wanted the word massive to be used among the other adjectives that are commonly used to describe his physique. And King, I'm going to just put it to you right now. Are you comfortable using the word massive to describe the 2011 version of Phil Heath? He looks, he's the best bodybuilder to step on stage so far. Phil had somehow brought an improved version of his 2010 package. Everything he was known for was on full display, but better. Skin, same muscle bellies. And here's going to be, this is right here. This is going to either win it or lose it for him right here. We got, yeah, he looks crazy. Yeah, he is definitely on the money. Yeah, there's the money shot right there. Boom. And the crowd's giving him his... Just the, do. the loudest ovation of the night for Phil Heath. His tiny joints combined with his ridiculously full muscle bellies made him look absolutely cartoonish. 3D. Like a freak. He brought a wow factor that hadn't been seen on the open stage in a while and subsequently blew the entire lineup away during the prejudging, including Jay Cutler. He was the most aesthetic mass monster seen in bodybuilding arguably since Flex Wheeler, but he was bigger. While Phil brought his all-time best, Jay had come in visibly off something which historically has marked the changing of the guard from one dominant champion to another. Prejudging is over. It sounds like the crowd went nuts for Phil Heath tonight. Phil, how do you feel? I feel awesome. You know, I feel like uh, the year off paid off. And uh, hopefully, you know, I can go back to my hotel room, uh, figure out how I can even improve on that and come back tomorrow even better. When the finals rolled around, Phil came back improved and delivered a posing routine for the ages. He had never been more confident. He had never looked better. He had never embodied a Mr. Olympia more, and he knew it. Everything had finally come together for Phil in perfect fashion and you can feel it in the air in the finals that something exciting was about to happen in bodybuilding. And that something was Phil Heath. Let's 
inside the chest. Predator Kai Green. And there it is, Kai Green with his best Olympia showing to date. And uh, you can be sure, we talked about Kai wanting to win this trophy, but he also needed to separate himself from the pack. And that's exactly what he's done. There's only two guys in the world right now that are better than Kai Green. One of them is Jay Culler. The other one is Phil Heath. And uh, Kai Green has done what we've long waited for him to do, and that is put himself past a whole bunch of guys who quite frankly have been beating him over the past season. It is deja vu 2010-2011, and uh, here we are, Jay Culler and Phil Heath will once again stand side by side as the two best bodybuilders in the world as they await... We previewed it. The Bob writers Cicarillo's have written all year long about it. The student versus the teacher. All of our presenters are on stage, along with our IFBB Pro President, Mr. Jim Mannion. I think they're discussing it. What do you got, Phil? <laughs> Gentlemen, in Olympia tradition, the next name you hear will be the 2011 Mr. Olympia. Please take the first place award. The Olympia gold medal. The check for $200,000. The Sandow Bronze Award. And the title of 2011 Mr. Olympia. To our winner tonight. In the history books tonight here in Las Vegas, Nevada, the gift he. Yeah, I mean, what can we say that we haven't said? He's he's a three-dimensional bodybuilder who Dom looks fantastic, and it's going to be interesting to see how long of a reign he can go on. Phil had finally done it. The sacrifices he made, the obstacles he had to overcome, his commitment to bodybuilding had been worth it in that moment. The greatness he couldn't achieve in basketball had finally been achieved elsewhere, and his name could officially be mentioned among not just the greatest athletes to come out of South Seattle, but one of the greatest bodybuilders to ever do it, all at the young age of 31. When I won the Olympia in 2011, 
it's a different type of exhale. You close your eyes, and then for some reason, my life flashed before my eyes. It went all the way back to when I was a kid, like your kids, like that size, all the way to the current time in 2011, but it, w it showed every defining moment of my life, every why in the road. According to Phil, it was all of the little things he did over all of those years that culminated in his Olympia victory, a victory which validated his saving and his second chance at life. Phil was officially the 13th Mr. Olympia, a title which he was ready to own. And while the life of an underdog is consumed by the chase, the life of a champion is a bit different, something which Phil would have to adjust to. He ended his 2011 season with a victory at the Shuru Classic in India where he swept the competition once again. At the 2012 Mr. Olympia, it was clear during prejudging that Kai and Phil were one and two, due to the judges placing them in their own callout. Phil came back in Peru from 2011 and brought his signature look but more refined, eye-popping if you will. Kai on that same note brought his best physique to date as well. He had these tall bicep peaks and a very sharp V taper which accentuated his X frame in all of his poses. He was also wider than Phil from behind. His conditioning was super sharp and crisp, he was extremely separated, and he looked absolutely translucent under that lighting. Despite these strong points, the fullness and thickness of Phil's muscle bellies, combined with his conditioning, was simply undeniable. As good as Kai was, it was clear that Phil was too much for him, something which became more evident the more they continued to pose in the finals, because Phil just kept getting better. Once their battle was over, it was clear as day on Kai's face that he knew Phil got the best of him, something which was confirmed when they'd announced the 2012 Mr. Olympia champion. Phil, he! And as we discussed earlier, Larry, Phil just a little too much for Kai and takes the next step down the road to building that legacy we talked about. Honey, we're here with two-time Mr. Olympia, Phil Heath. We're just talking about the change you made overnight and how good it feels to win. What do you got to say? Well, obviously, it was, it was a pretty stressful moment. You know, we were... Uh, looking forward to presenting a package and by the time we got up on stage there were some things that, that we needed to tweak and in the last 24 hours we were able to do that and it was very very stressful but at the same time we both knew that Phil was bringing in even a better package than he was last year it was just a matter of how it was being presented on stage with the posing there's a lot of different things that we did in the last 24 hours that I'm sure you're gonna read about in the magazines coming up and um, those things were the deciding factor At this point, he had also dubbed himself the Dream Killer and became a lot more comfortable talking spicy to the rest of the competitors because he knew that he could back it up. No, because it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, he can sign whatever the hell he wants. I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. Obviously, I didn't care. All I care about is winning my third title, you know, creating this legacy that I want to live and uh, crushing everybody's dreams. Just like that. Crushing everybody. Fired up as he walks to the stage. Your defending champ, let's take a look.
As the pre-judging was underway, Phil came out slightly improved from the previous year. He was clearly still Phil Heath. While guys like Sean Roden and Dennis Wolf were given opportunities to stand in the center, in the end, it was Phil and Kai, once again, who would be battling for the top spot. Uh, after last year's Olympia, even with a perfect score, I got, you know, obviously a lot of negative feedback from fans. I think they, you know, they really wanted to see a change um, because they were very excited what Kai Green presented in 2012. Mm -hmm. and, you know, my hat goes off to the guy. I mean, he, he definitely prepared well for that. Um, you know, realizing that, you know, there, there takes a lot of maturity as being a champion. And, you know, you try to settle into that, you know, and it's, you only have so much time to settle into that. It's very, very hard because you only have 12 other people to get advice from for that. And it's very difficult because of the Internet, you know, the, the you know, you start listening to way too many negativity, a lot of negative people and stuff, and it starts to piss you off. And, you know, I just felt like I didn't get, you know, how I say, I, I just felt like everybody just concerned about the gift and this and that instead of being concerned about, hey, this guy's worked his ass off. I mean, let's, let's cut him some slack. I mean, this guy's trained probably half the years as everybody else. And there is no magical anything that could make this guy do that other than hard work, dedication, and genetics combined. Kai had clearly put an emphasis on coming in fuller to match Phil, which there was visible improvement. However, he wasn't nearly as conditioned as he was in 2012, nor was he as separated. He also looked a bit flat in some poses, but ultimately, he just wasn't his best. Hell, there's a strong argument to be made that he regressed in his overall package. He still had that impressive flow and an amazing routine to show off, but when it came down to the mandatories, he did not do nearly enough to beat Phil. This laid a clear path for Phil to get his third Sandow, and although he wasn't perfect, he was clearly still the best bodybuilder in the world with little to no signs of slowing down. And at the end of the finals, Phil Heath's name would get called and announced as a three-time Mr. Olympia. Three-time Mr. Olympia, Phil Heath! Congratulations to Phil Heath, Mr. Olympia 2013, and once again, Kai Green falling just short, but a very respectable second place in a stacked field tonight here at Mr. Olympia 2013. With this victory, Phil became the first bodybuilder to three-peat since Ronnie Coleman, a feat which foreshadowed his future in the sport. If it wasn't already clear, he was here to stay, and planned on making history in the process. The pre-judging for the Olympia was underway, and Kai and Phil were ready to put on a show. With tensions high, their adrenaline rushing, and the fans going crazy, Phil and Kai were out the gates hard and posing their asses off while trying to establish dominance over the other. Head judge Steve Weinberger had them stand next to each other on the far left during the initial first callouts, and right away, you could tell it probably wasn't a great idea. Kai flipped his ponytail hard enough to whack Phil, a gesture which was not only obvious to the commentators, but to Phil as well. Having anticipated these exact kind of antics, Phil laughed it off and maintained his composure. He even made sure to not give up any ground and not move an inch. Kai, however, wasn't done. He made sure to continue to invade Phil's personal space and get right up next to him, close enough for them to bump elbows. And during this back and forth, Kai snapped, and in the process created one of the most viral moments in bodybuilding history. The audience went crazy, and the energy of the room went to another level, something which not only excited Phil, but the fans as well. This was an element of bodybuilding that hadn't been seen at this level before. It was riveting, it was exciting, and extremely passionate. To see a rivalry escalate to a point where both guys almost came to blows just showed how bad each of them wanted it. Now, I highly doubt that Kai was actually going to put his hands on Phil because at the end of the day, he is a professional, but it was hard to tell in the moment when it happened. And regardless of how you felt about it, you couldn't doubt how entertaining it was. Steve Weinberger did make sure to separate the two and place Dennis Wolf in between them to avoid another incident. According to Phil, this immediately brought the energy down in the room. The pre-judging was able to continue without incident as the first callout ended with Kai and Phil being on opposite ends of each other. And then came the finals. It was clear that despite both being on the outside during pre-judging, that Dennis and Sean were being compared for third and fourth. 
and Kai and Phil were clearly first and second. Even though this is a highly irregular structure for placements in the IFBB, it was pretty clear that there was a reason why they were separating Kai and Phil. And for those who understand the sport, it was actually pretty clear who the top contenders for first and second were. They both brought it, especially Kai, as he was bigger than he had ever been and exceptionally conditioned for that size. Phil was still bringing dense and full muscle with razor sharp conditioning. That signature paper thin skin proved to be beneficial again as his conditioning came through as it usually did. He once again had done enough to retain. But the question was, did Kai do enough to beat him? The next name you hear will be your 2014 Mr. Olympia. They will take all that in the title of 2014 Mr. Olympia. And we'll find out who that winner is right after these messages. Hang on a second. Robin says there are no messages. Well, in that case, your Mr. Olympia At the end of the night, Phil had been crowned the reigning, defending Olympia champion once again and continued to cement his place in the bodybuilding history books. On his mental tier list, he had just tied Jay Cutler, which according to Phil, pissed Jay off so much that they didn't even speak for a while. Now at this point, Phil was an unstoppable object and as he continued to move, his confidence would grow. He knew now more than ever that he could become the GOAT if he really wanted to. He had just beaten his biggest threat for three straight years and was given the vote of confidence by the judges that he was the guy and would continue to be. So why would he think otherwise? At the 2015 Mr. Olympia, he came in slightly improved and defeated former Olympia champion Dexter Jackson who brought an excellent package himself. But it wasn't enough. And Phil won his fifth sand out. To your five-time champion, the gift, Phil he In 2016, the next closest contender was Sean Roden, who had been a staple for years but had never gotten so close to the champ. While Sean had brought his best package to date, he just wasn't sharp enough to take down Phil. And although he lost after coming so close, Sean never forgot that feeling. The title of 2016 Mr. Olympia is six time Mr. Olympia. There it Phil, is. The gift. Yep. Phil Heath Heath makes it six in a row. Ultimate Nutrition, thank you so much for believing me. Thank you, my family, my mom, my dad, my girlfriend, Cherise over there. Thank you so much. And I can't forget God. Thank you, God, for providing me this opportunity to be able to do this. I never knew I was going to be a bodybuilder, but damn it, I, I love every minute of it. This is awesome. Man. At this point in the Phil Heath story, he's literally on top of the world and is a six-time Mr. Olympia champion. Since he became champ, many men had tried and many had failed to take him down. He was accomplishing everything he wanted and more, and rewriting history in the process. He had even become the first Mr. Olympia to have a seven-figure deal from one sponsor. When the stomach gets full, you're like, I won again, I won again, I won again, I won again. How does that keep you focused to keep wanting to come back? To At the 2017 Arnold Classic Expo, Phil ran into Arnold. The two had not crossed paths often in Phil's career, but despite that, they still had a tremendous amount of respect for each other. Phil made it a point to let Arnold know that he was looking to tie his Olympia total, to which Arnold replied by hugging Phil and giving him a head nod, encouraging him to do it. Obviously, I'm at your show um, exhibiting for my company, but I uh, just want to tell you it would be an honor to be tied with you for seven. You know, and I'm going to be training my ass off to make sure that happens. So. He acknowledged it, and he looked at me. And um, he and I, never, like I said, we have a very interesting relationship, but he looked at me, and he knew that I wasn't messing around. It wasn't just a rah-rah speech. It wasn't just, because we've all done that shit. He stands back, hugs me. Wow. And grabs me and says, 
And he can't really say you're going to do it because Dexter Jackson is standing right next to me, who's, who's a one-time Mr. Olympia. So he doesn't want to make him feel bad. But he says, like the nod, like, yeah. And your final competitor is your six-time reigning and defending Olympia champion, the Gift Bell he. At the O, he came in just as big as usual. However, his midsection was significantly more glaring than it had ever been, something which everyone was reporting on. It was essentially Phil's biggest nightmare come true. His biggest critique that he had been hearing about for years was even more prominent than it had ever been, and it's all the fans could talk about. Despite that, Phil did what he does best and brought a strong enough package to beat the second place finisher, Big Rami. The recipient of the 2017 iconic Sandow Trophy The seven time yeah. Mr. Olympia Phil the Gift He. Record at number seven. What's going through your mind? What's going through your heart? I'm just so thankful because when I started bodybuilding on October 8th, 2002, I had no idea that I would be standing on this stage one day winning the Mr. Olympia, let alone, you know, being seven time champion. When I got into this journey, you know, I was you know, a little bit bitter because I didn't make it playing Division One basketball, and I was trying to find another outlet. And bodybuilding taught me how to be strong mentally, physically, and emotionally through all life's challenges. It taught me how, it taught me how to train hard when no one's in the room, when you're having a bad day, through death, through hardship, through anything that can go wrong, you, I always had the gym. I always had the gym over at Armbrust. I could train. <laughs> I could train any time of the day. <laughs> there would be days I would train by myself or with my fiance Sheree, and I would be in there dying. <laughs> I'd be in there dying, looking at those pictures in the gym of Schwarzenegger, well, of Coleman, of Haney, of Dorian, of everybody. And I would just tell myself, one more set, one more rep, just give it everything you've got so you can put yourself in the best position to win. And that's all we can do in life, people. Sometimes life is gonna serve you up some curveballs, but I challenge each and every one of you to step in that batter's box and take a damn swing. You look in the mirror and you ask yourself, do you give it your all? You look at the mirror and you ask yourself, do you have another rep? You ask yourself, can I go to work when I'm pissed off because I'm about to get fired or something bad happened or lost my girlfriend or whatever it is. You ask yourself, do you have the guts to go after it when no one is watching, no one's patting you on the back, and no one is liking your stuff on freaking social media? If you got the guts to go after it, you can put yourself in the best position to win. And that's what I did through this entire prep. It was not easy. A lot of people say, oh, Phil, he's got genetics and this and that. I put that God-given talent to work each and every damn day in the gym. Yeah.